Hey, I got another uh, thing I want to talk to you about. I found a product. Uh, I want to tell you how I did it. A product to help us with social distancing problems. All right, you know, if you're like me, um, I kind of think I'm six feet away from somebody. It turns out I'm closer than six feet. I don't realize it. Now, the people seem to be in the same boat. Uh, other people seem to not know, you know, whether they're six feet or five feet or seven feet or... 14 feet or 12 feet or 9 feet or 8 feet. I mean, we just don't, we haven't gotten used to gauging distance so we know exactly how far away to be from people. So we're safe when during this uh, this pandemic. So, um, so you know, some people are starting to, you know, one company here in Spokane has come up with a product. It's a product made by the SOC, stands for Spokane Outreach Center, and they're outreaching to help us uh, cope with our uh, uh, COVID virus social distancing problem and that we do not know what six feet is. So anyway, um, I was I, I found this product in a very strange way. I was walking down the sidewalk. There were two women coming toward me. They had these little green, these, these fairly good sized buttons on their, on their, on their persons, on their shirts. Well, one of them had a button up on her, she had a thing around her neck and it was sitting right there on her neck. Anyway, so both of them had a, a green button. Uh, uh, and um, uh, the one girl, she just uh, passed by me. I don't think uh, she noticed me, and, and I didn't get too close to her, so I, I didn't really get a picture of what the green button said. But the second girl was lagging behind a little bit, and I was walking up there, and uh, I, got, I got what I thought wasn't more than six feet away. I was 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 healthy. I thought it was the right distance. I mean, I said that wrong, but anyhow, I thought it was a correct distance. And uh, and all, and all of a sudden, um, this little green button. Uh, I looked at it and I read it, and it says "back up, social distancing taser." Oh, I got one here. I bought. Well, got on. I got online and I found it, and I bought one from. You can get them on. Um, you can, the only place you can get them is on uh, a place called Nakatado. Uh, it's a brand new place. You can buy stuff. So um, anyway, I got this social distancing taser there. Now when I go out, I wear that. Anybody gets closer than 10 feet. This is what happened to me. Six feet. This is what happened to me. I was walking along. I was happy as it can be. I thought I was in a safe place. And I... And I uh, the thing, it's invisible, this taser, shot right out. I got closer than six feet to this woman walking by her, and 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 it hit me. And I, it took you got a scale on the back of this thing, how how hard it's going to be, and you got also got um, a way to adjust the distance. But anyhow, um, that 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 taser hit me, and I flew up in the air and flipped around and wiggled all over <laughs> and then hit the ground and rolled down a hill. And I got, there's a video of that because there's a person behind us that was filming the landscape. So it happens. And I, it, they, he gave me a copy of it and it's on my YouTube. It's another another thing. It's a couple of weeks ago. Anyhow, so uh, I woke up uh, and so what the heck happened? And these girls are still standing. I, I wasn't out for very long, just a few seconds, I think. But it did knock me down out and cold, and, and I woke up, and I was laying in a ditch. And <laughs> and these girls, <laughs> I think they were going to piss their pants. They were so, oh, they were laughing so hard they could not stand it. And they were pointing at me, and there were, other people were starting to look at a guy on the roadside driving by us looking over. What happened? And they said, that serves you right for getting too, too close to me because you got to be six feet away. And if you weren't closer than six feet, you put me at risk and my family and my health. And 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 and, and so you got tasered and you deserve it. So you stay six feet away from people or else you're going to you're going to be sorry. You're going to get sick and get other people sick. And and you better take this social distancing a little more serious than they say. It's like I thought she was my mama for a second. Anyway. Uh, my point is, what is my point? I think I might have, let's see. Oh, um, you know, they, they've got some new products to help us with this because nobody knows. Nobody knows what, so, you know, if you're like me, I, I I think I'm six feet away from someone, but I really don't know whether I'm five feet or four and a half feet or 
6.9 feet. But if you, you got to be at least six feet away. Some people are saying, now you got to be 13 feet away. And then tomorrow it might be 15 feet. I don't know. And then they might decide it's only, only four feet. I don't know. They don't know what they're talking about. They just tell this stuff. They even said they didn't know what they were talking about. So, you know, our leaders are, are just as baffled as we are. Um, and, you know, it's hard to put credibility in a leader that doesn't know how to lead, isn't it? Yeah, it's a hard time. Let's stop electing. Maybe that's a good idea. Stop electing leaders who can't lead. You know, then then maybe we'd have good a good leadership in our country. I know the local leadership here in Spokane is awesome. I watch the, I watch the city council meetings. I'm telling you, they are the sharpest mature folks i've ever seen in my life they are concerned about the public they're concerned about what's safe they listen they hear you and then if you have a good point they research it and implement positive things i've seen it over and over again watching the city council i mean it's boring as all get out uh, you probably don't want to it's on channel five and you know i've gotten so that i'm just watching and i'm amazed that our local uh we actually have mature adults running our city and we, we certainly don't have mature adults running our nation, the Congress and the, uh, just like an elementary school playground. I mean, I, I used to work in an elementary school playground. I did. Uh, for, for a few years, I was uh, with the public schools as an intervention specialist. I had the smartest kid in the, kids in the school in my, in my behavior room. <laughs> and that's a whole nother joke. I won't tell you that now, but, um, yeah, so I was on it, I, I, and I know exactly how they interact and how they treat each other, because I had to go out there and do my my duty to my playground duty every day. Every every teacher in the place had to do that. Public schools, elementary school, and you know when I watch the Congress and the uh, and the Senate interact with each other, it reminds me of the. It does. It reminds me of it. I'm sorry. I'm not being critical. I just, the minute I started watching, I go, I know this looks like an elementary school playground, you know, because the things they say and do, and then these filibuster things, the most ridiculous thing. I, you know, if I, I will, if any politician that I have any interest in ever conducts a, gets him, participates in any filibuster, I will never vote for them again, period. It's the dumbest, stupidest waste of time. It has shows that they have no concern for the the public or the or, and the, then then the nation's the nation's uh, economy shuts down. We don't get a, a the budget approved, and and then people start getting laid off. And they don't these politicians they don't care about their constituents. They care about being having a filibuster. Oh, I'm just going to keep talking about something. Until, I'm never going to stop talking. I'm just going to talk about anything I feel like, and I can't. You can't stop me because I can do that as long as I want. How much is that like a childhood playground? How much is that? That's just like some some little kids, two, two three-year-olds who just learned to talk and they can't shut up. I mean, let's get, I think we need to elect mature adults. And and since, you know, I don't know what, what happens with these guys. Anyway, you put them in, they're really good here. I mean, we may have, we have fantastic mayors and city council. They're, they are definitely here in Spokane, Washington. We have mature adults running our, I believe when I watch them interact, I see mature adults interacting with one another. And so, you know, and trying to figure out a way to solve the problems of the, of this city and make things better. And we got an awesome place here. Spokane, Washington is an incredible place. It's getting better all the time because they're addressing, they listen to the public. Public comes in and says, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. And they say, oh, well, thanks for telling Let us know. We'll, we'll take that under advisement. Now, now they're even polite to the idiots that come in and say, well, I want to be able to hang from the poles whenever I feel like it, and you won't let me hang from poles uh, from my neck when I feel like it, and I want to do that from now on. And, you know, they say, well, uh, we would like to have you do that. Uh, we would like to have you give, give you the freedom to do that. But uh, we, we feel that it might be harmful to your health and uh, people would be upset about it. It would offend people. And so we re even though we would, we would like to accommodate you in every way we can, uh, we respect your opinion and your feelings. And, 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 but unfortunately, we're, we're not going to be able to do that. But so, th thank you so much for coming in and telling us how you feel and what you'd like in our city. We, we, we really like that. I mean, how much more maturity can you get when somebody, some idiot comes in and tells you the most ridiculous thing you ever heard? They, they want the, <coughs> the city fathers to implement in their city. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's no way in the world that, that you could do that. 
and the guy doesn't, the person, man or woman, whoever it is, doesn't have a clue that this is simply impossible. You wonder why they're there talking. And, and they, they treat them like this, this, just as important as any other citizen comes in there that has a rational mind and is um, <clears throat> communicating something uh, that might be of benefit. I'm so proud of those guys, you know. Why can't we get leaders like that to run our nation? What happens to them after they, live, they, they start here and they're mature, <clears throat> then they move up to, the, uh, to some more authority authoritative place what's causing what's causing uh, the the devolution of our our political figures once we we see a good man he's he's mature he's doing a good job in our city so let's move him into a a a governorship now you see him he's in the governorship he's doing a good job he's still still uh, uh, a a a mature adult so then after a while he gets uh he gets put into maybe uh another place maybe maybe uh, he's elected to some office in the in the the central government and and he turns into an elementary school kid what's this what's this the backward uh, maturity it, it seems like the politicians we got go backwards in maturity as they move into more i don't know you tell me uh, but i would like to find somebody that's a, an adult to run our our, our our government and that knows what they're doing and I think it'd be wise for us to find someone like that and actually elect that person to office to run our nation I think we'd be a whole lot happier than swinging back and forth with Democrat the Republican Democrat every time uh, they're extremes and they don't know what they're doing and all they think about is how they're going to get elected next time in their party and they don't care about the american people in my opinion i don't feel cared about i think a lot of you out there aren't feeling cared about that and if it weren't so darn tragic it'd be funny i think it's kind of funny because we think we're going to find an imperfect human being we're going to find one and we're <laughs> and i think we got blind spots i think we got they call them scotomas I think we got scotomas where we we see somebody, we want them to be perfect, and we think they are perfect. And if they get in office, then we're going to have the answer to everything. When we get them in office, we find out after we elect them, they're an idiot. I think there's a movie about that, a couple of movies. Why are we doing that? Let's not do that. Let's stop. Let's address this issue and get some mature adults in leading our uh, if this next election, just let's just find an immature adult, adult in America that will do the job rather than just be a child trying to better themselves at the expense of the and pretending that they care about the people when they really don't. When it comes right down to it, anybody who does a filibuster obviously doesn't care about the people. Whatever's happening and whatever is causing that to occur, it isn't compassion about the circumstances of the little man who's suffering because of the filibuster they don't have a clue or concern in any level to their their plight and you know we got to get we got to get humble broken people in office who are intelligent and know that they don't understand anything and they they do the work to figure things out they go to god cry out to him and ask for wisdom i do that every single day of my life otherwise i wouldn't leave my house I mean, geez, I mean, anything, you know, if I, if I didn't have Christ, I would be sitting in my house. I'd be, even without the COVID virus, I wouldn't think, gee, I could walk out my door and a, a piece of space, space junk could hit me. Bam, I'd be dead right there. I mean, I, I, you know, or some, there might be a drive-by shooter who sees me and shoots me dead right there while I walk, or I might get in my car and drive, and somebody might slam right in the side, or I might be going through a green light, and then somebody just, and I, you know, the most strange thing in the world is that we trust. You know, we have trouble with faith in God, but then we don't have any trouble having faith in strangers. Driving our car right along the road, you know, there we are driving, and we see a green light. Oh, the turn, oh, light turned green. And maybe we're just, it just turned green. We're coming up to it, going the speed limit. And, and so we go, just go pell-mell. We don't hesitate. We just fly right through that green light. We don't give a, give a thought to whether somebody else, one of those guys, you know, we might have a guy who's high on meth coming down there, pell-mell at the moment that we go. We're coming in there, you know, we're going through, we're happy. We're singing, oh, do 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 life is good. I got a green light. I hate red lights. And yeah, so, do 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 and, and, and so we said, oh, everybody's going to stop for me because I'm going to go through this green light happy as a clam. And then it's the bam, somebody hits you. 
and you, and you might be maimed for life. How can you go outside and have faith that those people are going to stop at that red light? It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. There's absolutely no way you know what those people are doing. They could be on their phone. They be, could be pissing their pants. They could be doing. They could be. They could be uh, thinking about uh, being on the beach in the Bahamas and not even know that they're in a car. I mean, people do this. And even I talked to a policeman a while ago about a about a situation that happened to me once. I was driving down the road and I wanted to change lanes. So I looked in my rear view mirror. I looked in my rear rear mirror. Nobody in the lane next to me. And I thought, oh, good. There's nobody in the lane. Well, I, th I thought, you know, some, I might have a blind spot there. So I, I, I decided I would look again, just look down the road. And I put my head in there. You know, I looked down to see if there was a car. No car. You know, there's absolutely no car there. And I said, and then, and then I said, well, it's safe to change lanes. I checked twice. And so then I started moving into the next lane. And I just, as I was starting to move, I just thought, oh, I'm going to glance one more time. I've looked twice, but maybe three times the charm. Like with Batty, you know, the, anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I decided I would do that. So I, I kind of looked again, and there's a car right beside me. And I swear up and down there was no car before that. And I told my this policeman friend about that, and he's sitting there. He's just shaking his head. And I said, um, why are you shaking your head like that? <laughs> I should have turned that off. Anyway, why are you shaking your head like that? And he says, oh, that's nothing new to me. Uh, we have jokes about that. We come back to, after our shift and we get in there in the locker room and we're changing and we're all talking about the people that couldn't see the car that was right in front of them and ran into it. Happens all the time. People are looking right at something that they don't see it. And I got a sermon about that actually. It's called the scotoma, and it also means darkness or blind spot. And without Christ, you have blind spots in your life all over the place. And uh, you leave the, your house without Jesus, the light of Jesus in your mind, you, and, and a, making you able to see what's going on around you. You may just n horrible things could easily happen to you at any time. In fact, that happened to me once, and I was still, I was a Christian, but I wasn't as mature as I am now. It was about 10 years ago. The very thing happened to me. I was driving, I was working as a behavior intervention specialist. I was working with the most intelligent kids in the school, and uh, that was really fun. And <clears throat> nobody else wanted to work with them but me. I'll tell you about that sometime. That's a funny story, too. But um, I was working with them, and, I, and uh, we had an activity called a field trip over to the YMCA down, uh, I was working at Seth Woodard Elementary School, and it's a few miles from the YMCA in the valley here in Spokane. And I was, uh, I was coming back for an activity in my, my Bronco two, the most dangerous car that ever hit the road, except for the Corvair. We know about that. I had a Corvair once, I lived through it. But anyway, this one um, was a Bronco two. I was driving down the road just lighten my load. I had seven women on my... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was on the road again. I can't believe that I'm on the road again. I'm sick and tired of making music with my friends. Oh, that's not how the words go. Anyway, I was driving down the road and I, it was a, a... And it was a red... It was a... What was it? It was a green light. Yeah, it was a green light. I was going a little bit under the speed limit. Might have saved my life. And I was I was I was close to the speed limit, and I, and I saw that there was a um, there was a there was a car in the lane that wanted to turn in front of me to go up that lane. There it was on Montgomery, so it was going. They wanted she was she was wanting to go north on Montgomery. So no north on Pines, whatever it is, you don't care about that. Anyhow, <laughs> give you too much detail. It's gonna be here forever. Uh, so I was turn. I wait. I saw her sitting there. She stopped, and she was waiting for me to go through the light, uh, the green light, before she uh, made her turn. And she was coming from the other way. You know, you can turn right in front of somebody to go the go north when you're on an east west, yeah, east west street. I was coming. She was sitting here. She could come from the other direction. She was sitting here waiting to go that way, and and I was coming here like this. 
I should have a diagram here for you, but this is my hands all I got. So uh, I was coming up, and I was good. it was green light, and all was good. So I got about right here, and she pulled out, she gunned the engine of that that uh, car. It was a, it was a, what was that? It was a rodeo, a rodeo. It's only about 10, 15 years, 20 years ago. I don't know exactly, but anyhow, she she gunned that car, and she hit me right in the driver's seat hard enough to bend the steering wheel like this. Steering wheels, you know, you steering wheels, you know, they're supposed to be round like that. But this one, when they were done with, with I, when, when I was done being shook up, the, I noticed it wasn't the shape of this. <laughs> and the door was bent in clear into past the middle part of where I was sitting. And how did I live through that? There's a good question. Um, I had forgotten to take put my seatbelt on, so I bounced, evidently, because it went so fast, I didn't know it. You know, I thought she wasn't going to pull him. I thought I was safe. This really happened. So I bounced over to the other side of the car. <laughs> and I didn't have a scratch or a bump or nothing. I just kind of bounced over. And uh, and so she she just... She was not hurt. I was not hurt. And she she, she was just devastated. She said, swore down. She looked and there was no car there. Swore up and down. She could not believe there was a car there. Now, now that's a, what they call a scotoma. Happens to all of us. And that's why God tells us, don't trust your own understanding. Now, it's a funny, funny thing, though. One thing that happened after that, I went... I had the, you know, I, I called somebody, I called a Christian organization that, that I, I trust to, to do the body work or to see if it was a repairable on my Bronco too. And I, so I had it hauled there by the, by the, you know, the, the people that haul stuff. What do they call those guys? Um, hmm. Tow trucks. That's right. It is. So, so they, I had the tow truck take them to this guy, this Christian uh, body work place that is the most astronomically expensive place in town, but they do a great job. And so, uh, and so I went in there uh, the next day and I said, uh, did you get that Bronco two in that had an accident yesterday? And he says, oh, very solemnly, they said, yeah, we got it in. Yeah, we did. I said, well, what do you think? Is it repairable? No, it's not repairable. That that thing is completely totaled. The entire frame or something—I can't remember how they said it—but it said you can, you'd have to take the whole car apart and put it back together, and you'd have to throw away half the parts. It is impossible to fix this. It's so much damage, unbelievable damage. It's one of the most damaged Bronco twos we've ever had come in here. No way in Jose is this worth even anything probably aren't even any parts on it that's hardly worth anything i mean well there's a nice door but anyhow bronco twos you know they're the mo they're death traps <clears throat> so they're they're as bad as a courier i said that already i repeat myself a little bit sorry about that anyhow um i don't know what that's a sign of but don't think i have that whatever it is <laughs> so anyhow there i am uh, standing there, this girl's blubbering and screaming and grabbing a hold of me and telling me she's sorry and, and oh, are you all right? Checking over my whole... I said, leave your hands off of me. I'm fine. Get away. Back up, girl. You know, a little teenage girl shouldn't be driving probably in the first place. Anyway, I uh, I went in there and uh, I, I asked him this question and the minute I... And I, they said, oh, when's the funeral? For the guy, whoever, who was this? Was, who was driving? There was a girl or a guy. Who, when's the funeral for the, guy, the person that was uh, was driving that Bronco too? That's that's so sad. I'm so we were surprised it wasn't covered in blood. Um, so how is it? I mean, they're they're got to be dead, right? And I said, <laughs> I said, my friend, um, I was driving the car. I mean, that's how they look. They go. Like that. <laughs> I go, why are you making that face? He said, and he said, you know, one of the guys, there was quite a few employees listening to the story. And, uh, and they all, they dro their mouths dropped open like I'd never seen anybody before. And I don't think they were pretending or trying to be funny, but it was funny. But <clears throat> then I said, well, yeah, I, I didn't get a scratch. I, I have absolutely no bumps or bruises, nothing. And they said, we have never, ever, seen 
a Bronco II with that kind of damage. This is before airbags or anything. It's a long time ago. With that kind of damage, and we have never seen anybody come out of it alive. Well, what do you think of that? I, I, I think that's a miracle. I believe it's a miracle. God didn't want me to die yet. He wanted me to come here and say these silly things to you and maybe make you laugh a little bit because God is God is good. But you know what? It's good. It, it, that was one of those scotomas. So you not you know just don't all, don't trust your vision, don't trust your hearing or your smell, don't trust your own understanding. And I, I'm so thankful that then God's word it says tells us not be, have it be renewed by be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not trust your own understanding. Well, I'm beginning to understand why he said that more and more every single day. And really, I'm learning to take every thought captive. This says to take every thought captive, make it obey God's word. And I'm finding that I have fewer scotomas when I when I, when I take my thoughts calf deep and I'm safer, but my perception is better and I have a clear mind, you know, because God gave us a sound mind. He gave us compassion for one another and he has given us one other thing. Uh, if Well, he gave us freedom from fear, but he gave us a sound mind. Um, he gave us a sound mind, compassion. Oh, and he gave us power, scripture says. And that what does that mean? It gives us the ability physically to do what we need to do he gives us the, a sound mind so that we understand how to do it and and he gives us the ability to tolerate other people and love them even not tolerate them but love them even though they're offending us and even though they're they're walking in darkness and they can't see the truth and we do we have compassion on their condition rather than condemning them that's god and he's with us every day and he's already given those three things to you and if you're not not behaving with those two three things in action and you can see that in your in the fruit of your life then you need to pick those things up you need to let those things be activated in you so you can navigate your life a little better than you have been and it's available and if you don't know jesus as your savior it's real easy really no problem it doesn't cost you a penny you can make a donation to me if you wanted to but it's not going to get you salvation <laughs> The Spokane Outreach Center is my corporation. Anyhow, if you would subscribe to my my YouTube, that would be so nice because I own, I need to get a thousand subscribers so that I can be recognized as a human being that exists by YouTube. Anyway, that's another matter altogether. I won't talk about that. I didn't talk about it. Forget I said anything. Anyhow, <clears throat> my point is, I don't remember what my point is. I talk too much. So, um... I'm going to probably end this. You're not going to be probably getting this far anyway. Um, but uh, just know that Jesus loves you and live by him. Seek him. The answer to the question, uh, the, what we should do, is one word. Seek. Seek and you shall find. You seek God. And if you seek and you don't find him, it's because you didn't seek hard enough. And don't uh, don't give up. Because God is not a liar. I can testify. I'm 70 years old. He's taken me through seasons that I thought I'd die hopelessness, uh, tragedies, uh, financial collapse, rebuilding my life, uh, my wife of 43 years, and I'm not having a pity party here. I'm happy as I can be, as hopefully you can see. God has brought me through with godly sorrow, and he's taught me what godly sorrow is. And I will never live my life in worldly sorrow again, because it goes nowhere, it makes things worse. So if you're going through a tragedy today, I want you to seek God in godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to a transformation of your character. So you're no longer the same person. You no longer have the same problems. So I wish that for you today. Let's pray. God bless those who are watching. Rest on them with your Holy Spirit. Heal them deep inside. Help them to understand what it means to seek you. Help them not to give up. Help them to get stubborn and apply their stubbornness to finding you, to getting you to, to enter into their lives the way you promised that you do so they can have freedom that you wanted the, them to have because we know, God, that you uh, it was for, it was, it's for freedom that Christ has, has, has given us freedom, has set us free. And we, we're entangled in a yoke of bondage. Once we get free, we don't want to go back into that. So let's uh, let's seek him till we get freedom in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Ho ho ho. Hallelujah. I'm so happy I can stand it. So God bless y'all and know that God's with you, guiding you and everything that's happening. 
You can choose to make it work for you by having godly sorrow, or you can choose to go around in circles until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired in this worldly sorrow, and then come back to Jesus. He'll, he'll, he'll bring you back before you die, hopefully. God bless. Bye.